we're going to do the high altitude today and let Tony kind of help you understand, help me understand why we really want to embrace this stuff because we get freaked out. Don't we, Tony? Now you were getting, you were getting ready to name off. Uh, If we, uh, if we really um, uh, talk about the high level, because even though healthcare uh, plays a role in AI, uh, there's a lot of other industries that, are using it from manufacturing to finance and it goes on and on. But, but if we really focus on um, healthcare and uh, just, just to give you some stats. So in 1950, medical knowledge doubled every 50 years. So 1950 medical knowledge doubled every 50 years today, medical knowledge doubles every 73 days. Uh, today, there's more than 1.5 million peer-reviewed scientific journal articles published every year. Um, you know, and the reason why I say that because we 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 were talking in the prior segment about there's 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 three medical schools in the United States that have an engineering bent to them. Um, and I think that's important because when I went to medical school in the late 1980s. Uh, there was a finite set of information that we could learn. Fast forward uh, 30 years later, there is so much information out there uh, that I think AI plays a really important role is how to help us sift through that um, that uh, enormous amount of data we have to make relevance out of that. And, and I think from, from a healthcare perspective, in the four areas, one is how we diagnose patients, two is how we transcribe our medical documents, because as you know, burnout uh, in physicians is real, burnout in nursing staff is real. Uh, if, we, if conservatively we have 45% of physicians burnt out, we have a million physicians in the United States that we have 450,000 physicians that are burnt out. It's truly a public health crisis. And part of that is how to get better on the medical documentation. Third is how we do drug discovery and development. And four is how we get some administrative efficiencies. Uh, and, and I and that's why in the prior segment, Tom, I I, I said um, I think even though AI plays a twenty percent role per se now, I think in the next five, six, ten years, it's going to play a huge role uh, because people are always going to get sick, people are always going to need healthcare, um, uh, innovation, technology from most invasive to least invasive surgeries is going to get more. Um, and so it's really, uh, I, I, I think what AI does, it gives us the ability how to sift through this so much information out there. Because like I said, 1950, our medical knowledge doubled every 50 years. Now it doubles every 73 days. And there is no way anyone can have the ability to sift through a million relevant articles and make sense out of it. And so that's why I think AI is going to be really powerful. Who is leading the path on training the next level of professionals or ramping up all of our skills? Because you and I, I mean, we we do this stuff. We Not, do all this stuff. Who's learning? How is it? Tube University, where are we going to get the education? Yeah, you know, Tom, I mean, medical education really hasn't changed much over the last uh hundred of years is uh is has been uh, there's been new uh, there, there's been some new paradigms in the, in the curriculum how have we trained people but uh uh but 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 i think you're right i i think we have to think differently how we train physicians today uh because what we're doing obviously is not working as well because if we have 45 percent of physicians that have some burnout symptoms uh, you know, that's a huge number. And that was during the COVID pandemic coming out of the COVID can- pandemic, it's even higher. Uh, but, but I, but I think, you know, that's why I think these innovative medical schools, uh, that are, have this engineering bent are through the, are truly going to be transformative because for a few reasons, one, 
is um, how to learn in the AI engineering space gives you the ability how to sift through information too. A lot of these new medical schools are smaller classes, and so they're more agile. You have the ability to experiment and transform. Um, and then third, I, I, I think since it's new, people are excited. And so that creates some creativity. Go oh, right ahead. You got your diagnosis, to transcribing, drug discovery, and administrative efficiencies. Please, sir, go right ahead. Yeah, so uh, uh, I often say, what do physicians want? They want to provide quality care. Um, they want to be efficient. They want to be appreciated. Um, and and uh, healthcare has been a late adopter on a lot of technologies for various reasons. But I think AI and healthcare today in the four really areas is one is how we diagnose patients because AI could really develop uh, algorithms that analyze all bits of information, such as medical imaging, x-rays, MRI scans, CT scans, as well, it can bring in laboratory tests. It can bring in biomarkers. It can bring in wearables things, heart rate, sleep monitor. And so, but it really can be assistance to healthcare professionals to make a more accurate and swift diagnosis. Uh, and um, so I think that's one area. Two is transcription, because uh, when I trained in the 80s, our medical transcription wasn't as good at it, as it is today. I think the electronic medical record system is good and bad, um, but, but I think it adds on enormous amount of time. So how do you make that more efficient? Uh, with all this speech recognition technology, uh, you can develop algorithms and machine learning models. We convert spoken language into written text. Um, and there's there's a variety of uh, products on the market that you can literally sit in the patient's room with with your cell phone. You can record it, and at the end of the visit, it sort of transcribes things for you. Uh, you know, a third is how we do drug discovery and development. Because, like I said, in 1950, medical knowledge. Um, uh, doubled every 50 years. Today, it's 73 days, 1.5 million scientific articles published annually, and that's going to get uh, larger. So how do you sift through all that information to make sense of it? And so I think AI and Dumas algorithms can accelerate the drug discovery process by analyzing vast data sets uh, and it can identify potential drugs and it can also predict how they're going to work because you and I are two human beings. We could have high blood pressure. We could be on the same meds, but our genomics or proteomics or gene profile are different. So my drug may not work for you. And so how do you sift through that? And then fourth, I think from an administrative efficiencies, such as billing, scheduling, because we do so much paperwork and rework, how, we, how you can improve the back-end processes. Uh, because I, I, I know that uh, uh, at, when I was at MSU um, Healthcare, is we were beginning to use bots uh, and really how to streamline some of these administrative tasks. You know, and so, so I think those those four areas around uh, how we diagnose patients better, how we transcribe our medical documents, how we do drug discovery and development, and then fourth, how we can have some administrative efficiencies. Um, and I think, you know, how to sift through that so much information to make sense of it, so we can diagnose patients more accurately, we can treat patients more accurately. So people can, you know, really go from that wellness to disease back to wellness. Dr. Avellino, how would you like people to connect with you? Find your book. Go ahead, sell it, baby. Go it, sell it. So you can uh, get my, uh, you can go to my website, findingpurposeavellino.com. Uh, my Gmail is avellino37 at gmail.com. Uh, but, uh, but, but really, you know, Tom, what you're doing is creating a platform where people can share their stories, share knowledge. So we all can get better. What do you do with the data? I mean, so is that going to happen for us? Is that an advantage? Yeah. To 
Oh, yeah. yeah, you know, the thing is, uh, healthcare is such big business and these EMR systems, Epic, Cerner, and um, and others, uh, the, the uh, financial um, implications, but what you're talking about is the interoperability. Yeah. Uh, be, be, because I must say in my 30 plus year practice, people come, come to me, it'd be a lot easier, um, that, uh, if we had one system that I can just look up their imaging and their labs, cause we actually do a lot of rework. And so anytime we can get some of those inefficiencies down, uh, but, 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 you know, but, uh, but with that said, I think healthcare is changing. AI is really going to transform things. And so, you know, I'm a hopeful person. And I think as, as uh, uh, this whole open AI stuff has uh, open software, uh, you know, I think that leads to creativity and uh, increasing access and lower cost, you know, and so, uh, so I think over time, um, that's something that we should strive through, uh, strive to, I'm not sure if we will get there in the next five or 10 years, but I, but I think it's something that will make a huge difference and increase quality and lower costs and ultimately increase access. Tony, you had, I know you had some points about advantages and disadvantages yeah. getting off that. I want to give you the rest of the show. We got yeah. about three or four minutes to go here. Yeah. Some of the so, disadvantages that you see. Yeah. So I, I think some of the advantages is, is like we mentioned, how we can improve diagnostics and how we can use uh, the multiple bits of uh, precision medicine, meaning uh, uh, really having different people's different genomics and protein uh, uh, protein protein profiles. Uh, two is how we can streamline some of the administrative tasks and workflows. Three is how we can enhance how we uh, develop uh, new drugs, new therapies, as well as uh, streamline some of our research. Uh, but, but, but I think there are some disadvantages, um, and I think you know it really breaks down into uh, one: the ethical concerns about data privacy issues. Um, two is potential job displacement, uh, because if you have more, uh, people in AI, um, there's a potential that those jobs may be, uh, uh, taken away. But like I said, by 2025, they're predicting 97 million people will work in AI. Uh, and then third is how we can, uh, how the re reliability and trust, uh, but, but I, but I think the legal implications are too, because AI, the human brain can process so much information, but legal implications, how we, how we monitor the technology, how we influence it, how we control it. Because I think AI may be able to monitor, influence, or even control one's individual thoughts, emotions, and behavior. So could we develop sort of this superhuman uh, that's not all good, but does bad things too? And so I'm, um, you know, and so those those are some um, uh, far fetched things. But I think as as AI gets uh, uh, developed, um, I think the benefits totally outweigh the risks um, because it's all about how we get better um, in healthcare, how we. Um, diagnose things better, how we treat patients better, how we increase our access. Uh, because at the end of the day, we all want to get better. So what's your takeaway? Yeah, my my takeaway is really uh, is AI is not just one thing. It's multiple things. But I, I think we have to keep an open mind because uh, as, I, as AI gets bigger, it's going to transform how we think. It's going to increase our creativity. And with creativity comes improved efficiencies. Um, and so I, I, I uh, but, but, but I'm hopeful because a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, students are going into computer science now. Uh, and I think computer science and AI and robotics, uh, virtual reality, mixed reality is really going to change. All right, just got off the call with Dr. Avellino, Performance Living Innovation. This is a massive topic. We didn't even hardly touch the notes that he sent over. 
disease detection, drug development, predicting healthcare, um, imaging, how to find info. It's so massive. It's so massive that it's just, it blows my mind. So we'll get, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But I just tell you transitions, performance, living, innovation, AI, all of these things, we need to understand how they work and not be afraid. Okay. But what, what Dr. Avellino said on some of the, the negatives, the ethic, the ethical nature, privacy, job displacement, reliability, and the legal ramifications, all relevant. I just want, all I want is the EMRs to talk to each other. If we could get that thing solved in my lifetime, which I know we can, I mean, Christ, are you kidding me? Somebody get to work on that, will you? Get to work on that EMR thing and integrating all these together. Come up with a platform that ties all the platforms together. There's got to be a way. There's got to be a way. But I got to go because I got production stuff to do. Until next time, thank you so much. You want to get the whole show? Go right up here. That's where we'll put the, the 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 little block where you can just click on that thing and go get that full show. And away you go. All right. Until next time, I'm Papa Tom. They call me Papa Tom. Tom Matt, Tom Matt show. Dr. Avellino was here. Performance, living, innovation. Thank you, Vanessa, for tying everything together. You're doing so good. You're doing a great job for us. And we will talk to all of you next time. Until then, peace out. Love y'all.